Hello everyone, in this video I will go over my solution for the problem named Rho Majo taken from today's code forces round. This is an excellent problem which will teach you divisibility and finding the first integer which does not divide a given number. So in this problem we are basically given the Rho Majo order of a grid of characters is written when you just write the elements of the uh, of the grid in in the normal uh, order in which you go one one element at a time row wise and you want to uh, obtain this row major order of a grid and ensure that no two adjacent cells have the same character so we want to ensure that uh, given a positive integer n once you write n in a grid once you write a string s of length n in a grid then there'll be no such row major order uh, which which is bad which contains two adjacent uh, cells with the same character and you want to find out what is the smallest string uh, the string with the least number of distinct characters which has uh, which which satisfies the property that uh, no two adjacent cells uh, once you once once you write the string uh, in row major order once you do the reverse of it, you construct the grid using this uh, row major order of the string. Uh, once you do that, the grid does not contain any two adjacent cells with the same character. So in order to find such a string with minimum characters, first of all, you need to ensure that only, only the lowercase lateral letters are used. And that gives you a big hint because there are only 26 characters. So 26 alphabets, but n is up to 10 power of 6. So why does this work? And uh, immediately you can start thinking along the lines of of maybe like 2 raised to 26 or uh, 26 factorial or so, so, some, some sort of exponential or factorial function. Uh, obviously something like 26 square or 26 cube will not work for n up to 10 power of 6 and uh, once you start thinking along those lines you will actually reach the solution pretty quickly um, along with one other observation so I'll be explaining the intuition behind the observation and the solution but I suspect a formal proof uh, is given in the written editorial so the intuition behind this observation is that if you have a integer n let's take an example which is 6 you can six. You can write six as two into three. So the only divisors of six are divisors. So let's say you want to find the divisors of six. Uh, they are just one, two, three, six. And you know that only among divisors of six, so only divisors of six, can be the number of rows. Or the number of columns in the grid so you cannot have a grid where the number of rows or the number of columns uh, is not part of the set so, so, so this set basically tells you what can the size of the grid be so these are candidates for size of the grid uh, and this helps us because uh, we know that once the grid size is is one of these uh, integers, you can you can start thinking about which strings will work. So if you uh, if you if you have a grid of size uh, one by six, so if you have a grid like this uh, of size six, then you need all you you can uh, you can just alternate like this but this will fail because because uh, r equals to 2 exists so if you uh, if you have something like this where the number of rows is 2 instead of 1 uh, that, then your solution will will actually work but it will fail when r is equal to 3 because so let's just draw it out let's say that 
you have this type of grid a b a b yeah it clearly fails in this case because you have two adjacent elements which have the same character which is not allowed um but if you if you so if you if you consider if you consider the the possible candidates for the string then clearly uh, ab 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 doesn't work uh, because it fails when the number of rows is 3 and the number of columns is 2 uh, in general if you have a string which is like let's say let's say you have yeah, let's say you try abc abc uh, if you try abc abc then this will actually fail when r is equal to 2 uh, it should because because you're repeating the same thing again so again you're repeating the same idea of having two adjacent cells which are equal and basically what i'm trying to get at is that two adjacent cells so two adjacent cells are equal when so if you have g of ig equal to g of uh, the next the next row basically i plus i plus c comma v uh, th this is when two adjacent cells are equal where c is the number of columns and we know that c is a divisor of n like that's just a side thing which you should keep in mind at all times that c is a c is the number of columns is a divisor of n and this helps us because if you have a string which repeats so clearly if 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 you want to construct a string of length 10 power of 6 you want to have a periodic string so this is another big idea the idea of a periodic string <coughs> so this is an, another big idea the idea of a periodic string where the string should repeat it, it can't be something random because you want to uh, you want to make sure that there's some pattern so that you can print it for large values of n and if you want to output a periodic string uh, then then you can't have uh, then you want to satisfy this condition that uh, that s of i is not equal to s of i plus c because if s of i is equal to s of i plus c you will automatically be able to construct a grid where c is a divisor of n and uh, since c is a divisor of n you will be able to construct a grid of c times n by c so grid of size c by n times c uh, n by c sorry and once you have the grid of size c times n by c you will have two adjacent cells so you'll have two adjacent rows uh, containing the same same characters so you'll have every adjacent row having the exact same rep repetition so you'll have ABC, 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 so on, and you'll violate the condition. This is exactly uh, why the period, so the period, the period cannot be equal to C, where C is a divisor of N. And I keep iterating this because if C is not a divisor of N, uh, I don't have a formal proof for why the exact opposite holds true why the converse holds true but it actually works out to hold true if c is not a divisor of n then simply output a string uh, with period c so this basically means that if you consider the divisors of six you have one two three and six so you can't have you can't have a a a uh, because it will violate one. You can't have A B A B A B because it will violate two. You can't have A B C A B C because it will violate three. But you can have A B C D and A B. You most definitely can have this because it does not violate a divisibility condition. And that's basically like the entire solution. You just find the first find the first non-divisor. And you print a periodic string which has that many number of characters. So now I'll show you the code which implements the same idea. Uh, first, we just handle 
from border cases. Then we find the smallest number, which is not a factor of five, and you create a periodic string with a period length equal to uh, this number. And this is the least number of distinct characters because any small factor can always be split into a grid, and the resulting grid will violate the equality condition. I will validate the inequality condition rather because it will contain two adjacent rows which are equal. So that's why you have to find a non divisor and just print a periodic string which with that length. So as you can see, the code does get accepted. And I hope you like this problem and my solution. If you have any doubts in any part of the code or in the explanation, do leave them in the comments down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thank you.